have something I want to share with you. Here's a very tough question. What is this? It's a metal bowl. Excellent. See, I told you it was not a difficult question. Is it a small bowl? No. No. It's a big bowl. It's a big bowl. This bowl has special significance to me. This is the very bowl that my dad used to make bread in. He can't make bread anymore. So on a recent visit, to visit my parents, oh, maybe a couple years ago, out in Oregon, I saw this in their storage area, and I said, Mom, can I have that bowl? And she said, sure, take it home. So I brought this bowl home. I have vivid memories of standing next to Dad in the kitchen and watching him put the ingredients into this bowl and then bring it out and kneading it on the counter. And sometimes he would let me help him, which was wonderful. I was about this tall at the time. And my dad was so tall, six foot one or something. And then he would mold it into loaves and put them in these greased old loaf pans and put them in the oven. And a little while after that, the most amazing aroma would fill the house. I think you know. I think you've experienced that as well, haven't you? Such a wonderful thing. And then you'd slice it, and the butter would just melt on the bread. The inside was soft, the outside was crusty. It was just amazing. So when I went away to college, so far away to the strange area of the world called New England, I would start thinking about my dad's bread. And mom, one year, wrote me a letter, because this is back in the dark ages, before we had email. She wrote me a letter and she said, what do you want us to have ready for you to eat when you get home after the semester? And I wrote back and I said, I don't want to walk in the front door from the airplane, walk in the front door of our house and see dad pulling loaves of bread out of the oven. And my mom was really organized, and she pulled it off. <laughs> I walked in the door, and Dad was pulling out loaves of this wonderful bread. And for me, I think that memory is not just of an amazing bread maker my dad was, but a feeling of being home, about to be fed something wonderful that would sustain me. And just even the thought of that, the memory of it still fills my heart with joy and feeds my soul. Well, this day we were talking a lot about bread and Jesus. And then afterwards, we're going to feast on this bread ourselves. Not my dad's bread, but an equally wonderful loaf of bread <coughs> made by Cindy Thompson. When I first came here to St. John's, I said, I wish we could eat from one loaf at communion. I wish we didn't have to have rice cakes over the side where some people get to eat that and other people eat the bread. I wish we could all partake of one loaf. And we did some experimentation. We tried to pull it off. We had a lot of trouble with crumbs, especially. And so I thought, well, Lord, maybe this isn't meant to happen. <clears throat> and then Cindy came along. She said she could make gluten-free bread for us. I said, well, it's also got to be rice-free. Because we have somebody else in our congregation who can't eat rice. And by George, she did it. So this Sunday, and all the Sundays to come, we will all be able to partake of one loaf. All of us will be fed by Jesus, nourished for the weeks to come. What a wonderful thing that is. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.